In this video, we're going to determine the shear formula for beam bending using equilibrium equations. Right, so first things first, we're going to take a look at a 3D view of an I-beam. So you've probably seen these before, but now we're going to take a look at the side view, and now we're going to start adding some forces. So maybe a direct up and down force, so like a point force, uh, maybe a moment, or maybe a distributed force. Either way, we can take a cut at some point along the beam and take a little bit of a closer look and see what's really going on. So if we were to resolve all those forces into their reaction components along the cuts, you'd see a picture that looks something like this. Now we can use these forces in that we know that they'll cause a axial stress as well as shear stress in the member. And we can use an equilibrium condition to solve for what shear stress is, and more importantly, discover a equation that we can use to solve for shear stress in the future. Okay, so here we have our cross section found for making a cut along the beam, and we have our axes x, y, and z placed at the centroid that's found along the neutral axis for this shape, and we're going to be looking at cuts a, b, c, and d that look like this, and we're going to solve for a formula for shear stress tau at each one of these cuts. All right, so the first section we're going to look at is cut A, and we're going to use X equilibrium to solve for what tau is in terms of V, Q, I, and T. So I'm going to show you a video of a rotating 3D section of A so that we can get a little better idea of what we're working with. So the green color will be a free surface, red will be a sigma or you know, a axial stress surface, blue will be a shear surface or tau surface, and here's our section. So you can see it rotating here and you can kind of get a little better idea of what the entire section looks like as we move it around. Now I'm going to leave that moving in the background while we continue with the example. So here's another view of the same section from a fixed perspective. It has a width dx and a thickness t and we're going to be looking at incremental areas along the red faces of this section and it has a height going from A to B. And here are our reference axes. Now on the back face we have sigma, and on the front face, sigma plus D sigma. On the blue face we have tau, and opposing it on the red face, also tau. Now tau is averaging constant over the blue face, but sigma varies over the red faces. So if we want to do a sum of forces equation, we can just have tau times the thickness times dx to have its contribution to the force, but we need to integrate sigma and sigma plus d sigma over the red face. Now with a little bit of manipulation, we come to that tau is equal to vq over at, where v is the shear force moving across the face of the cross section, q is the first moment of area of the area we are looking at, you know, the cut, and i is the moment of inertia of the cross section and T is the thickness of the cut. All right, so now we're gonna look at cut B and perform the same X equilibrium analysis as we did for cut A. So here's our cross section as before. And here's where we're gonna make the cut. So as before, green surfaces will be free surfaces, red surfaces will be sigma or axial stress surfaces, blue surfaces will be tau surfaces, and here's a 3D rendering of our section we're going to be looking at for a little better idea of what we're working with. So we're going to see an animation of it moving around, and it'll give you a little better idea of what we're going to be working with with our X equilibrium. So while that continues moving around, we're going to move on to the static image, which looks something like this. So our coordinate axes are as follows. It has a width dx, a thickness t, and a height from a to b. We're going to be looking at incremental areas, dA, and our stresses will be oriented as such. So we have a axial stress sigma on the one side and sigma plus d sigma on the closer side. On the blue surface we have a tau and it's opposing tau across the red surface. Now tau is going to be average or constant over the blue face, but sigma is going to be varying over the red faces. So if we perform the same x equilibrium analysis we did before, so a force balance in the x direction, and start working with the terms and collecting and simplifying, we'll find that our equation for tau is still vq over it. All right, so now we're going to look at cut c and perform an x equilibrium on that section as well. 
So here's our cross section, and here's where we'll be making the cut. So again, green is a free surface, red is a sigma or axial stress surface, blue will be a tau or shear stress surface, and here's our 3D section. So we're gonna have it rotate around here so you can see what we'll be working with. So as that rotates around, you can look at it and get a little better feel for the section we're going to be working with so you can kind of understand where the surfaces are and how they interact with each other. So here's our static view of the section. It has a width dx and a thickness t, a height from a to b. We're gonna be looking at incremental areas dA. Now here's our coordinate axes. And as before, we have our sigmas, our sigma going out and a sigma plus d sigma going out on the other side. Now you may have noticed that they're going the opposite direction as they were on cut b. Now this is because we're now below the neutral axis, so they've switched directions. You'll see the same thing for tau. Again, a tau running across the blue surface and an opposing tau running across the red surface. But as before, tau is average and constant over the blue face and sigma varies over the red faces. So you may notice that now there's a minus sign in front of the first sigma term and more or less, you know, the, the directions have changed. But as you'll see, if we perform the same continuation, you know, uh, simplifying terms and making sure that we kind of break down the equation step by step, we'll find that even with this change of sign, tau is still vq over it. All right, so our final section we'll be looking at is cut d. So here's our cross section, and here's where we're gonna be making the cut. So as before, green will be a free surface, red will be a sigma or axial stress surface, blue will be a tau or shear stress surface, and here's a 3D view of our section. So we can watch it move around to get a little better idea of the section that we're gonna be analyzing. So while that rotates around, we can then look at the static view of the section as such. Our coordinate axes are aligned this way. It'll have a width dx, a thickness t, a height from a to b. And we're gonna be looking at incremental areas once more that are dA. Now, as with the last section, sigma and sigma plus d sigma are coming out of the section, or out of the red faces, that is. And tau is running across the blue face from the front to back, if you will. And we have an opposing tau running across the red face in the opposite direction. As before, tau is average and constant over the blue face, while sigma varies over the red faces. Now, we have a similar equation for our sum of forces in the x direction for x equilibrium. And likewise, as we solve through the equation, we find that once again, tau is equal to vq over it. All right, so what if we take a cut through the centroid? We've looked at four other sections, but those were on the flanges of the I-beam. What if we take a cut through the web? So we have a cross section like this. We're gonna make a cut here. So our coordinate axes will be aligned as such, with the neutral axis running right through our cut. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at that cut through the centroid using our x equilibrium analysis. So here's our section, and here's our cut. So once again, green will be a free surface, red will be a sigma or axial stress surface, blue will be a tau or shear stress surface. And here's another illustration of our section, as this one might be a little complicated, but it, this should help you understand kind of what we're working with and how it looks in the 3D space. So while that's moving around, there's our coordinate axes and our static view of the section. Now this may seem a little bit more complicated, but we'll break it down and it roughly ends up being the same as all the other sections. So it has a height from A to B, a width dx, and a thickness t. We're going to be looking at incremental areas once again of dA, and we have a sigma and a sigma plus d sigma term, and those are coming out of the red section. And we have tau running across the blue face and down the red face, opposing the blue face tau. Now tau, as usual, is average and constant over the blue face, while sigma varies over the red face. And we're gonna perform the same uh, sum of forces e equilibrium equation to find what tau is, or find the equation for it, that is. So once again, we break down the terms and simplify. And even though it may seem a little bit more complicated, in the end, we end up with tau equals vq over it, even for this section. Previously, we've done all vertical cuts on the flange, but what if we were to look at a horizontal cut on the flange? 
So our horizontal cut will be at point F, as you can see there. So it looks something like this. All right, so now we're actually gonna take a look at cut F and use our X equilibrium analysis to solve for what tau is. So here's our section, and here's gonna be where we're making the cut. So as before, green will be a free surface, red will be a sigma or axial stress surface, tau will be a shear stress surface, and that'll be in blue. And here's a 3D view of our section. You'll see it kind of rotate around and turn a little bit so we can have a good idea of what we're working with. So while that's moving around, we'll look at the static view of the section. And our coordinate axes are aligned as such. It has a width dx and a thickness t, and its height goes from a to b. We're also going to be looking at the incremental area dA across the red surface. So our axial stress sigma and sigma plus d sigma will be coming out of the red surfaces like this. And we'll have a tau going across the blue face and down the red face. Now tau is averaging constant over the blue face, while sigma varies over the red faces. So applying our same sum of forces x equilibrium equation for the sigma and tau, and a little bit of simplification, we once again arrive at tau equals dq over it. All right, now that we've looked through all the different cuts on this cross section and found what tau is for each and every one of them, here's a recap so you can know what we did for each of the sections and how it relates to the overall cross section. So in this, a yellow box or yellow shaded area will be the area we looked at, the red dot will be the centroid of that area, and the black arrow will be the distance from the neutral axis to the centroid of the area. Now, if you're going to be calculating Q in the VQ over IT equation, it would be that area times the distance. So here's our cross section. We first looked at area A, then we looked at area B, then C below the neutral axis, and D below the neutral axis. Then we decided to make a cut at the neutral axis. So our area was this. Then we decided to make a horizontal cut along the flange, and that looked like this. Now, after we've made all these cuts, we found that no matter how we made the cut, we found that tau is equal to vq over it. So we can now use this to solve for the shear stress in a section given a vertical shear force v, or a horizontal shear force v, the first moment of area q, the moment of inertia of the entire cross section i, and the thickness of the cut t.